Yeah. You've given me one for this, it was at 82 and 70. And then I think it's down. So does that just join up to the top left corner? Yeah. There it is, right. Lovely stuff. Okay. Next one across then. Oh no, we'll draw that plastering on the left in between it and the brick. Not little. Do you just want the top point and the bottom point then? Yeah, so that'll do. Then just tell me how wide it is. Eighty-five and seventy-three. Yeah. Eighty-four and eighty.
Yeah, it's not even on the same. Yeah, I just put it up and then I realised later on that it had some other stuff. No, that, that, that's perfect. Do you mind if I just have a quick look anyway? Yes. That, that particular layer... Uh, that that, that looks very good. It's only because of the motor that had to clean all the dust to the wall. I mean, my bet is when it dried out and had to get a good burn. In my facility, in my issue, is your license. Trying to leave most of the See that one there, but there's, there's probably parts of it. I don't think they are great, really, the same. I think we still got potential to, to have artifacts just slightly to that kind of level. Difficult to clean this, the void, and the I think we can just have a bit of a level it back and then we do the case of all the stuff. That's good, that's definitely good. That's what we want to see. Nice and clean always. How to avoid when you too much, you know, like a rich, rich stuff. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's not too high, isn't it? But that's the hard work, isn't it? The plastic, you know. And we got here quite a lot between you guys. That's quite too high. We even got right now to not walk in. Some other hands. Maybe to join between between you two. Yeah, right. You're right there. I'll just see you. Mm -hmm. So you want me to leave this in for a bit? No, no, no. Just You're happy now to, to keep doing it. So yeah. you need you need like a hand uh, matter or something. Yeah. Or something. Or you know, a yeah. big, big layer hammer can be quite. Yeah. Um, leave it. Well, we're talking to not quite careful. In fact, but. They all need to go because they are, yeah. they're not really, um, it's not yeah. a mixture of stru mm. structure, it's more like a, yeah. you know, demolition being packed in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so at the moment I'm basically getting rid of the rocks to talk yeah. to you about that there. That's right, that anything you find that may be actually, um, you know, being built up, you know, like yeah. a proper construction in the south, but it looks like some fine, so yeah, kind of already. Yeah. 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 It's not clear is when you do fast uh, okay. line. If you got clear edges, you, you sort of uh, make it up. I think that's kind of fairly, very clear. Mm -hmm. and it should be. And is it true? Is it, is it like that? Is it not following a little bit there? It might, it might not be picked it's, it up. It's hard. If you have
corrective uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah? yeah. It's alright. Mm -hmm. 
can leave it now. Take me on the one. It's not a proper method, because this is grit, sand and lime. Yeah. Proper method is a, a sand coal short, one coal fort, and then you put charcoal in it and lime in it. You like mix it so many buckets. What are they used to do? Just, just pure lime? No, the way we, I've just told you, but this is grit, sand and lime. It's, it's a bit stronger. But it is, it is a traditional way, but not the proper traditional way of what we do know how to do it. And this makes it a bit stronger, that's all. Fascinating. Not when you work it every day. <laughs> Nothing is when you do it every day, is yeah. it? Where's that trowel? Ability comparison based on typical annual consumption, conditions apply. See website for details. Calling all rock and roll fans. We won't pretty long if we don't want to be on. new show that everyone's talking about. The Twist. Back in George's Hall, Bradford on July 23rd. The Twist makes your dream line of reality. With over 30 hit songs and breathtaking tributes to the stars, including Elvis Presley, Dusty Springfield, Buddy Holly and many more. To book now, call the box office on 01274 432 triple O. The Twist.
just want a sound check, yes. All right, okay. Kate. Kate. Okay, can we have your, your name so I can just check? Kate. Can you second there? Slinger. It's fine. Okay, I'm Robert. Okay, Kate. Well then, what's it like spending hours digging in this dirt? Um, it's it's fun. It's nice to be out in the sun. Um, not had much rain, mm -hmm. so it's been more or less dry the entire time, which is nice. Uh, why do you do it? Why do I dig? Yeah. Because um, I enjoy getting dirty. <laughs> very good. So, does it beat sitting in the lecture theatre? Yes, very much so. Excellent. Good. Now then, what was your inspiration? Do you fancy yourself as Indiana Jones of the 21st century? Not really. <laughs> I have many ulterior motives for coming to do archaeology, mainly that I just like morbid things like bones. You like bones? Mm -hmm. Anyway, what's been your best find then? Oh dear, we just plugged it up the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so carry on. Carry on. Um, best what? find... Let me ask the question again. Um, yeah. Just to help us out, when you ask a question, don't say yes or no or something. Can, mm -hmm. can you put uh, the question in the answer? Like, the reason I like being here is not just okay, uh, yeah. all because I don't like, I like digging bones up. You just, sure, yeah. Just because we just want to pick little bits out. Oh, right, okay. It's okay. okay. What's been your best find? Um, I think I found a, I found a really large deer scapula in one of the walls of uh, the Long Gallery, and it was um, really nicely worked and cut and kind of shaped quite nicely, and I, I thought that was a really lovely find. Mm, I think that's my favourite. Anyway, what do you think of the Manor Lodge site? I think it's really, really nice. It's a, it's a really open site, and you know, it's, it's, it's a nice place to be, even if you're just in a hole in it. It's really, really, you know, quite scenic, and the flat wildflowers all around are really nice as well. Yes, they're really lovely. Anyway, do you think it's a bit underrated by the book Yeah, I don't think many people know about it. I don't think they, they need to advertise it more and kind of get people here because I think it's a really great place for people to learn about the history of Sheffield. You know, it's the same with the castle uh, and the castle square. People yeah. need to know that these things are here so they can come and get involved, really. So where are you going to be digging next? Um, I think I'll be digging in Durham next, This in about... Uh, a few days' time, about four days' time, I'll be digging in Durham on a Roman site, um, which will be really good. It's for, yeah, very different, yeah, completely different time. So it's going to be really interesting. It'll be the first time I've uh, done Roman, which is brilliant. Okay, I'm Ronan again. Can you have your name, please? My name's Ian. Can you say your name? Mailer. Okay. What's it like to spend hours digging around in the dirt? Oh, it's great fun. It's, it's much better than sitting at a desk. Why do you do it? I do archaeology for fun, basically. Um, I'm, I'm a bit older than some people here, and I've been doing this for a while. And I started off when I was a young lad, taking my father around old castles in Scotland, and I haven't stopped since. Great. And does it beat sitting in a lecture theatre, then? Absolutely, yes, yes. I like lectures, but only in very small quantities. This is more fun. And what was your inspiration? And do you fancy yourself as the Indiana Jones of the 21st century? My inspiration is, no, I'm not Indiana Jones type, despite the hat. You know, he's a bit, he's a bit too Nazi bashing for my like. I, mean, I don't like Nazis, but I mean, he bashes them, really. No, I, I think I'm more sort of a uh, time team person. Yeah? Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, what's been your best find? The lead musket bow, I think, which we found on this hole a couple of days ago. And uh, what do you think of Manor Lodge site? I didn't, I didn't know Manor Lodge was here before until this came along. I knew, I knew Manor as the, the estate of houses and things where the police helicopter occasionally comes. Uh, and this site is really amazing. It's, uh, it's just a, such an unexpected thing you come to as you come up the hill here. It's really good. It's a bit underrated by the people. I think it's just not known by the people of Sheffield. Um, if they knew about it, they'd rate it well, I think. And where will you be digging next? I haven't got anything planned, I'm afraid. I've got some other activities in the next few weeks to do and uh, no more digs until next um, year, I think. Do you want me to go through in any particular order? OK, all right. You ready? OK. Um, so this is from Trench 20 in the outer courtyard and it's a piece of um, potentially late 13th or early 14th century um, 
coal measures pottery. Um, and this is particularly important because it's really crucial dating for the wall um, that we've got in that trench. So it suggests that there is some medieval activity going on over there. We need to do a bit more work to figure out um, whether that actually says that the wall is medieval or not, but it's certainly one of the earliest pieces of pottery that we've had from the site this season. We've also got, um, from the same area, um, a lead musket ball, which um, has this, you can just see on the side, um, it's got this flattened area, which means that it's been shot, it's been fired, um, and that came from Trench 20 in the outer courtyard as well. Um, and another nice find that we've got uh, is a bone needle, we think, um, from the Long Gallery area, which is probably associated with the 19th century occupation in the Long Gallery uh, itself. Right. Yes. Is that all right? As close as I can. Doesn't show up very well against um, skin. <laughs> <laughs> we have got some. Can you just pretend that you talk about it then, so because she's got movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. So it's look a bit more natural. Okay, that's fine with that mm -hmm. one. Um. And that will be explaining the uh, yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of flattened area. <coughs> okay. So, and this is the piece of. And just see some glaze. Just have your name uh, for sound, please. It's Dawn Hadley. Dawn Haddy. Hadley. Hadley. H A D L E Y. 
Well, first question, simple, what, what are you doing here? What? We are excavating here at Sheffield Manor Lodge to find out more about the Tudor history of the site and also to throw some light on the 19th century uh, inhabitants. There are a number of cottages built into the Tudor ruins in the 19th century for the workers that worked in the, the coal mining industry. So we're looking at both aspects of the site. And what have you found on this dig? Well, we found quite a lot about the 19th century inhabitants. We've been digging the floors of their houses and looking at how they were building their houses inside the ruins and, and in many ways building on top of the demolition of parts of the Tudor uh, structures. Uh, we found a lot of the pottery that they use. A lot of that pottery has got religious imagery on it. It's got quite political messages on it as well. So we're learning quite a lot about their lifestyles and what they believed in. And what is the historic importance of the site? Well, this site is incredibly uh, important in the history of Sheffield. It's uh, the hunting lodge, the medieval park. Um, there's some important Tudor structures that survive here. Of course, we know a lot about uh, the history of the site in the 16th century, and it's owned by the Earls of Shrewsbury and the Sixth Earl. Uh, George Talbot um, had uh, Mary Queen of Scots placed into his custodianship, and she spent some of her time here. So it, it's not only locally, it's nationally and internationally important in the 16th century. But I think it's also important because of the afterlife of the site as well, and that can be forgotten about locally. But it was a, a location of a thriving industrial community in the 19th century, which was uh, removed from the site um, in the early 20th century. And uh, how important is it for the students to get real hands and experience? I think it's incredibly important for archaeology students to get out into the uh, local community and, and excavate. Um, we can teach them a lot through textbooks and through our lectures, but you don't really understand archaeology until you get into a trench with a trowel in your hand and start uh, interacting with the material yourself. You've already alluded to uh, things have been cleared off the site, but uh, what's the realistic chance of something really exciting? Or is it just going to be a laborious process? Oh, it's. I think everything that we do is really exciting. I think. I think learning more about the nineteenth century inhabitants is incredibly important. And the, the contemporary comments about what a, what a terrible community it was and how they were the, the people who lived here were spoiling the romantic ruins. But actually, they were living, working very hard here. Uh, they had a very high religious uh, standards. You can see that from the kind of pottery that they're using. Um, but we're also learning about the, the hunting lodge as well and there's a, a large uh, stone structure that we're excavating. We don't know what it is yet, um, possibly uh, some sort of garden feature, possibly to do with the uh, management of animals in the, in the park and we, we hope to find that out as we carry on with the excavation. Is any archaeological on this site of something more modern because there used to be a pit for, I believe just around the corner? No, mostly we don't find anything any later than about um, 1900, and that's when the, the, the mining community was cleared from the, uh, the site. So actually within the Hunting Lodge area, it, the 19th century is, is the latest date. And what, what's are the major challenge in a dig like this? Uh, the, the major challenge is when you've got a number of different trenches open are sort of making sure you know every, everybody is and you've got the right number of people um, uh, for each task and they know what they're, they're meant to be doing. But we, we talk to the students a lot so they know what they're doing and they can ask questions. I think it's very important in the excavation. And what do you think of the site and as an important part of Sheffield's heritage? I think it's incredibly um, important and I wish that more people knew about it and came and visited and, and, and enjoyed the archaeology and the history of this incredibly important site. You're finishing this dig now. Are you any plans to come back in the future? Well, we're finishing the, the three year excavation this year, but we are working very hard to understand uh, the significance of the previous excavations that took place in the 1970s. Again, they're incredibly important excavations that haven't yet been able to be published. So we're working on those finds um, in collaboration with the museum and with the previous excavators. So hopefully, we'll really get to understand the history and the, the archaeology of this site. And what role does archaeology play in today's society? Well, I think people are incredibly interested in their communities, in their history, and their sense of place, where they're from, um, and engaging with the community around them, and I think archaeology can really bring that alive. I mean, as I said, with respect to the, the 19th century community, you can't see anything of it now, but we can find out about people's lifestyles and the material that they were using, and I think that really helps us to connect with the communities uh, of the past and the regions that we live. And what can we learn from the objects and items found? Well, I think we can learn um, about people's jobs, the kinds of things that they, they did at the site, but we can also le uh, learn quite a lot about their belief systems, what they, what they thought about their community, um, their religious beliefs and so on.
What happens to the fines that you, you, you find here? Well, what happens to the fines is that we have to wash an awful lot of them. Uh, then we'll study them, um, try and work out what date they're from, um, look at the, the range of material from the different periods that we're, we're excavating, and then we'll be writing a, a detailed report on it. And, final question, if you're a fantasist, what artefact would you like to find on this site? Goodness me, if I was a fantasist, what I would like to know is what that large structure in the outer courtyard really is, and it's going to be quite a difficult challenge to, to work that out. Um, so some kind of um, a stone tablet with um, this war uh, uh, for the management of deer would be nice. That's brilliant, thank you. And uh, just one last thing, if it... I know you just come from there, or do you want to go down there? Can I just get an establishing shot of you, so you just don't appear oh, right, yeah, on sure. the video? I don't go back to the trench or downstairs, whatever's coming. Don't mind. Uh, shall I? Do you want me to just walk from up there or something? Uh, is that going to look odd coming up? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather you'd be. What, what, so where do you want me to? Uh, do you want to go down there? See yeah, if sure. We're, we're Or having a chat, it's not for sound, it's just for. It looks like it's just an environmental sample. Thank you. If it's just an environmental sample, then that can just go into here. Sorry, sorry. Um, that doesn't look like ours. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of ours, I think. Yes. It's definitely not cute. 